Hi everyone, Migs here again, and today I'm going to show you how to set up your game launching options. To do this, you'll go to your game icon, which is ETS2. In that icon, you'll right click and you'll open up the properties tab. Right, once you've got that, we're going to look at the target location. Right, I'm just going to open up a little thing there at the bottom in the text editor. I've basically given a summary of what everything does and how it affects your game. So what you're going to look at is the target location of the game. If you touch on that, you'll see that I've got mine saved in my E drive. I've created a separate uh, location for it in case there's a crash on my machine or whatever. It's much easier to, to manage and it gives me a lot of flexibility when it comes to updating and that kind of thing. But basically that is standard uh, code for where the game launches from. If you tap your end key, it takes you to the end of that command line. So basically, the location of the game is in the program files and the Euro Truck Simulator 2, Iberia, that's the one currently got installed, and the Ubin folder, and the, your Windows 64 folder, and then your Euro Trucks 2.exe. That is your starting location. And now, to make the game work more effectively, I don't know, some of you have maybe experienced this where you're busy playing and suddenly the game freezes and you get an error stating the log file exceeded its limit size, truncated. There's an error of that, of that sort. Basically what the game does, it runs out of memory or runs out of space to log all the information that's happening in the game, the processes and all that. So to overcome that, we have to add certain code after this. But remember, every code you add, you've got to add a space. So I'm going to press the space bar now. You'll see that I've opened up a space. And I'm going to add unlimited log with a, a, a dash in front of it. So control C to copy. I'm going to click on there again, put a space in there, and I'll say control V. All right, you see it's been placed in. So basically, as it says here, the log file exceeded its file size truncated. That's an error that you get. What it does is unlimited log removes the limit of the game log text file size. So you've got unlimited space now. Uh, it will use up all your hard drive space if needs be to log all the events in the game. All right. So that's what that one does. The next one is MM pool size. And I've got a figure there of 32. So that's the next one that we're going to put in. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to add all these commands into my target line. And then I'll explain to them as we go along. So I've added a space again, control V. And there it is. You can see it's been added. I'll get the next one, which is MM max resource size of a thousand. Control C to copy. Click on your target space. Control V to paste. And there you can see that's been added. We go to the next one, which is MM max temp buffer size. Control C. Click on that. Go to the end. Press space. And then Control V to paste. That's been added. And then we got the last one, which is force mods. Control C. Go back over there, space, control V to paste. Right, now that's all been added. And to make this effective, you've got to press apply. Once you've applied it, everything's good to go. So when you start your game, all these commands will have an impact on how the game loads, starts and plays. All right, I'm going to close this for now. And then we're going to go into detail now. So basically, I've explained the unlimited log uh, command, what it does and how it helps you. We go to mm pool size. I found that uh, with this parameter, if you have, if you don't have the parameter in at all, it won't do anything. But the minute you have a parameter in, it only gives you eight gigs of memory availability. Now it depends on how much memory you have in your machine. So in my case, I've got 32 gigs of RAM. So I've set it to 32,000, and it actually allocates 32 gigs to the game. You can try it out for yourself. If you've got 8 gig, do the 8,000. If you've got 16 gig, do, uh, do 16,000. Try it out. See for yourself. You can even leave it out and see the differences you get in the gameplay. You should notice the difference. Okay, That's what MM pool size does for your game. The next one we're looking at is MM max resource size. This value, you know, if you search the internet, many people have got different interpretations of what the value should be. Some people say the maximum value on this should be 100. I've had it at 100, and I've had it at 200, I've had it at 50. You know what? To me, the game has worked best at 1,000. So if it is the maximum value, if maybe just in my head, 
I can't tell you for sure, but these are the numbers that I've got that have worked for me. So this is to help ETS2 players get the most out of their computer when dealing with this game, with the game's significant performance problems and issues. As we all know, there are little issues. So we, uh, th these codes have been created to adapt to the, the game's problems and issues. L let's leave it there. The next one is MM max temp buffers size. All right. Again, this is debatable. A lot of forums out there, a lot of uh, uh, blogs out there, all claim different numbers. I've played with all the numbers that they've suggested, and like I said, I've played with these things a lot. And the number that's worked for me, 5688. Basically, what this command does, it gives you the ability to squeeze more out of your computer if you have a little more horsepower to play with. If you want to go and search more on this topic, I've added a link to this site here and you can go and read it up for yourself i'm sure there's there's many other topics and forums that discuss the very same issue but that it will give you a better idea and understanding of what what's going on out there but like i said for me this is what works the five six double eight that's what's given me a bit of comfort in this and then the last one is force mods uh, this basically directly loads the mods into the game in the mod manager order okay so it's hard to explain, but in certain instances, there are certain mods. You must remember, mods all share the same folder structure. So if you've got a mod that's basically AI-driven, you will have a def folder in that mod. In that def folder, you will have traffic data file, a SII file. The thing is, with different AI mods and different vehicle mods and different uh, mods of that nature, all share the traffic data SII file. And remember that every time a file gets created into a mod, the guy creating the mod has his own interpretation of what the value should be. So think of it this way. Let's say you've got 10 mods in a row, all doing different things, but each one has got its own traffic data file. But each tra traffic data file is represented differently with different values. Remember, the one will take effect is the one that's got the highest priority. So it will be the one right at the top of your mod manager. So if you've got values, uh, let's say, in mod number 7 and number 8 that you really want to enforce into your game, because they're in the lower order of the, of the ranking, you, they will not come through. And you will always second guess why the mods don't work or why they, the, the game doesn't do what you want it to do. So that's been my issue with mod order. Okay, So when you force the mods, you force it in the way that the mod manager in its order, uh, rank and file. So th it's very simple. This is a quick tutorial. And it's just to give an idea of what to do to make the game launch and play to the machine's best ability. It's really very simple. Guys, again, if you enjoyed this video, please like it. Uh, if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please hit that uh, subscribe button. And if you'd, like me to, if you'd like to see me cover any more topics, leave a comment down below and I'll add it to my list of videos to create. All right, that's all I have for you today. And I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one.